originally when I, I just give you one other quest thing on oral history. When I started writing commercial history books, not academic history, but history for the public to consume, I combined what had been my career up until that point, which was journalism, I was a phone and radio host, um, with um, placing stories, therefore, interviewed stories into our historical narrative. And I grew up in a tiny village and mum every Christmas used to make us give calendars to all the old women, all the old, you didn't use a word then, but all the widow, widows and spinsters, you know, that's what she said, it was the 1980s. And um, I just had this massive affinity with sitting on, on people's floors, uh, eating their rock cakes, listening to their stories. Old Ma MacDonald, I remember she was, I grew up in a small Highland village and she came up from Watford when she was 14 and worked in a big house. And I was just really riveted by the idea of her life, you know, that began back in 1911. And I think um, that was where I got this appetite to record stories before they literally slipped off the conveyor belt of life. And I began with um, Bletchley Park and the Bletchley women. And then that became, made me kind of, um, hungry for a broader wall story and a broader 20th century narrative where I could place women. So I went on and I found women for the emancipation of um, women that or partial emancipation in 1918. I found um, six women had all been born in 1918. And then much more recently, coming up to date um, for this festival in 2022, uh, I looked at the 80th anniversary of conscription for women, the only time in British history when women were conscripted to serve, not just in the military, but it officially in the war effort. Um, and that was in 1941, so 80 years ago last year. And I went about, it's the beginning of lockdown, and I, and I was on the hunt for as many women as I could find who were conscripted. Now, bearing in mind, you couldn't sign up to be in the female army, which was my focus, because the main reason for conscription was to increase the size of the ATS, Auxiliary Territorial Service. Um, you couldn't be in that service unless you were 17 and a half. You couldn't be conscripted until you were 1920. So these women are super, super old. I was working in lockdown with 17 women, all older than the Queen, every single one of them. And one of the most queenly, in my humble opinion, is actually Joyce. She's blooming marvellous, though I say so myself. She's truly royal. She is my own royalty. Whenever the Queen's ill or not too well or not mobile, I ring up Joyce just to get a barometer on how it might be to be in your late 90s. Well, I have had to give up tennis recently, but I've taken up table tennis. So she's real front foot board. She still drives to Trichester, although I don't think she's going to drive to your festival by herself. But Joyce will be headlining at the Chalk Valley Festival this year, aged 97, because once you get to that age, you can show off about how old you are. And she was actually under the umbrella of the Auxiliary Territorial Service in World War II. That's the female army. But she was in the elite wing. In fact, the Fanny, as they were known, yes, it engendered a titter then and still does now, first aid nursing yeomanry to you and me, did not really like being under this ooh, ATS umbrella. The ATS actually was said by the Times to have the wrong sort of girl. Well, I tell you what, the Fanny had all the right sort of girls, including Joyce, who had two very interesting jobs. Uh, the first job, she was an assistant to the SOE, Special Operations Executive, and she was based at a station in Oxfordshire. She's gonna tell you all about that. I tell you what, Joyce worked hard and she played hard. But then she went on to do the ultimate in regal jobs, and that was to drive. After all, who joins the ATS in 1945? None other than HRH Elizabeth. Well, Joyce got there first. Yes, she was behind the wheel a few months before our queen and Joyce saw the princess on the balcony on the 8th of May, 1945. When I say living history, I present you with Joyce Wilding. Really, it should be OBE. Perhaps it will be by the end of the Chalk Valley Festival. Who knows?